Hey guys and welcome to this brand new episode on GSAP. Today we are going to learn how to build this beautiful website using GSAP library. Um actually we are not. We are going to first get started with the basic fundamentals of GSAP library. Yes, you heard it right. I actually believe in the principle of getting the fundamentals right before getting into the advanced demos. So before we start coding our animation it is necessary that we should visit the greensort.com because from this site we are going to get the reference of our javascript library let me just scroll down the page and you will see that there is an option called as download gsap just click that this will give us two options either you can download it as a zip file and include it into the project or you can just simply use this cdn link so i'm just going to copy the script tag let me just copy it it's quite inconvenient there should have been a copy button but anyways let's just generate a simple html so i'm just going to use a shortcut now we'll just add our script tag looks good let me define a simple square so i'm going to make use of the div tag and i'm going to assign a css class as box we are not going to add any content and let me define the style sheet for it so that our box becomes visible on the screen and it looks nice so we have a box as a css class selector we'll just give a width as 50 pixels height as 50 pixels we are going to define a border radius so it looks rounded uh, let it let's set it as 10 pixels we are also going to assign a background color so background color and this time I'm just going to make use of Indian red. Now it is also necessary that in order to animate our div tag, we need to define the position. We are just going to set it to relative. And if I just save this file and if I make use of the live server extension of Visual Studio code, this will start a web browser as well as a web server, which can be used to speed up the development process so you can see on the screen a square is getting displayed on the top left position as of now there is nothing fancy which is happening but just in a few seconds we are going to animate this square okay it looks good let's just go back to visual studio code and let me just close this pop-up it's a bit annoying okay so now we want to move our square from its original position to the left and in order to do that i'm just going to add a script and in order to animate our square, I'm going to make use of special object called as twin max. And I'm going to make use of a function called as two. Now there are different options which are available. We'll get into the details of each of those objects. But first, let's just animate our box. So I'm going to pass the CSS selector. Now again, there are three options which are available. Either you can use the CSS selector or you can make use of the DOM APIs in order to select the particular DOM element. Also, there is another option. You can use jQuery and pass the jQuery object to this two function. So multiple ways. Uh, let's go ahead and pass the second argument. The second argument defines the animation duration. So in our case, we are going to set it to two seconds. The third argument is a very interesting argument. It requires the properties which needs to be animated so in our case we are going to move it to the left so left is going to be 100 pixels or let's just leave it as 100 now if i'll just save it and if i'll just go back to browser you will see that our square box is getting animated now congratulations you just achieved your first animation with the gsap now before getting into the details of gsap library and its various functions let me just talk about the very important aspect of the GSAP library. So I'll just close this pop-up. You will see that on the top, there is an option called as licensing. Just click this particular link. Now this is very necessary. I've seen that most of the demos or most of the tutorials are not actually talking about this important aspect of the licensing. Now, if you don't understand the licensing and if you start using any library within your project, it might create legal issues. So I'll always recommend you that whenever you are going to use of any software, be it open source, be it a commercial, you need to first understand the licensing requirement. So I'll just scroll down and you'll see that 
the gsap has made a beautiful effort to explain the licensing requirement it says that if you are just going to use this particular library in an application or in a game or in a site which is available as free to the users then in that case you can actually use it without a need of buying it now when you are supposed to pay for the license of gsap it is required only in case if the website or the application is available to the end user only after sign in and they are supposed to pay in order to access the functionality then and then in that case yes you are supposed to buy the business license of gsap so make a conscious choice and make sure that whenever you are going to make use of the gsap library whether you follow all these particular conditions or not so that's all for this particular video i know that we haven't covered lot of things within the gsap we just got started with a very basic example but the intention of this video is to make you familiar with the gsap in the upcoming videos we will be going through lot of examples lot of functions and we will cover some advanced topics so that's all for this particular video i will see you soon in the next one till then take care and build something